So as I mentioned about the moment of inertia, moment of inertia is directly proportional to the square of the radius. So I is directly proportional to the square of the radius and we have to take some unit to overcome the proportionality. For most of the objects, I is not equal to inverse squared. For most of the objects, I is a fraction of inverse squared. But there are some objects I like the ring and some of the objects which have the same square, which is I is called inverse squared. So the ring, I equals inverse squared. And I said before that the I varies according to the axis you choose. So the axis I choose is going through this center. And this, this one. In the case of ring, it's not a problem, but in which case you will see. In the case of a sphere, I is equal to this going through this center. This is the Right? So, but if you take a bar, then I say take a bar. If it is going through the center, I is equal to 1 by 12 times L, L square. L is the length of this. And if it is going through the edge of this one, I is equal to 1 upon 3. So, in the case of rod, in the case of rod, the case of rod, the moment of inertia varies with the axis you take. Here it is 1 upon 3, 1 upon 3 ml squared if it is going through this edge. And if it is going through the center, it's 1 upon 12 ml, ml square. Oh. It is this here. This right? So the moment of inertia varies with the distance you take, and also it varies according to the shape you take. So it's very important in circumstances like this to take an inclined plane. Take an inclined plane like this. Right? So take a disc like this and bring the disc has a momentum. So this is real, this is spear and ring. Spear has a momentum of 2 by 5 and square. And the ring has right. So the time taken to reach the sphere to the bottom of this one is P1. And the time taken for the ring to come to this one is P2 is not equal. And the acceleration is that one and the two and the two. So moment of inertia. We completely affects the motion of objects. It completely affects the motion of objects means it's a very vital content that we should study in detail and it will be very valuable when you're studying the next concepts. So the next concept which is a derivative and which we derive from the uh, moment of inertia is the angular moment. Angular momentum is the product of the moment of inertia and its angular velocity of the object. So, L equals I. Now you know that for an object like this, 
translation of motion, if you put the force of F and the of M, the initial velocity is V1, and the final velocity is V2, same force F, Ft, Ft equals 0, and T equals T, right? Ft equals n times v2 minus p. This is equal to n delta v over delta n. So this is the monitor. This is the monitor. So it's called this p. So p is equal to delta n v. So as I said, angular momentum is the product of the moment of inertia and the angular velocity of the object. How do you get it? Let's draw a three-dimensional plane. It's y and z. The object is a part like this, such point P plus momentum. And this is the center of so this are this is the object one. Right? If you have to touch on it, then not, not this. I, I don't confine this object to this one, but the whole thing, whole thing, whole thing, this, this whole thing is the object. Right? So this is the center of the object. And then this is R, and this is this angle is theta. You can say L equals P times R sin theta. So now P is the P is the uh, linear momentum and L is the angular momentum. P is a vector, therefore L is also a vector. Right? So the angular momentum is a vector, it has a direction and a magnitude. The direction of angular momentum is found by the right hand rule, which I will introduce shortly. So N equal P as a P plus N V times R. L equals N.